hummable. They're toe tappers, but they've got lyrics that'll blow your mind. And not necessarily in a good way. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 stalker songs. For this list, we looked at a mix of songs that were actually about stalkers or from a stalker's point of view, those that sounded sweet but upon further examination were not, and those that hinted at obsessive behavior or unwanted attention. We've excluded songs that could possibly fall into the jailbait category, because that's a list for another day. Number 10, Voyeur, Blink 182. Well, at least they're upfront about it. This track, off the punk rock group's second album, Dude Ranch, tells the tale of a guy who can pluck up the courage to do anything around a woman, except talk to her. Maybe that's just not his thing. Sitting on a tree branch outside his object of affection's window, our pantsless narrator is challenged by foliage, curtains, and the girl's ass-kicking brother. Still, he doesn't let these obstacles deter him in his quest to see his sweet lady. Number 9, Stan, Eminem featuring Dido. Dear Slim, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. I left my cell, my pager, and my home phone at the bottom. I sent two letters back in autumn, you must not have got them. An ode to the dark side of fame, Stan takes the form of a series of letters written by an imaginary fan obsessed with Slim Shady. If you didn't want to talk to me outside the concert, you didn't have to. But you could have signed an autograph for Matthew. That's my little brother, man. He's only six years old. We waited in the blistering cold for you for four hours and you just said no. That's pretty. As the song progresses, Stan describes his deranged attempts to connect with the rapper. I ain't that mad, though. I just don't like being lied to. Remember when we met in Denver? You said if I write you, you would write back. His anger at failing to do so eventually leads him to kill his pregnant girlfriend and commit suicide by driving his car off a bridge. I'm almost at the bridge now. Oh, I forgot. How am I supposed to send it out? Is it any wonder Stan is now used to describe people who are excessively infatuated with something or someone? And then the car they found a tape, but they didn't say who it was too. Come to think about it, his name was, it was you. Number eight, Possession, Sarah McLaughlin. Listen as the wind blows from across the great divide. Although it reads like a love song, Possession was actually inspired by a number of creepy fan letters Sarah McLaughlin received. In fact, a year after the song's release, the singer was sued by a fan who claimed he was the source of those letters. Since he committed suicide, the case never went to court. But there's no denying that a backstory like this gives new meaning to lyrics like Number 7. I Will Possess Your Heart, Death Cab for Cutie Of you and me. This tune starts off innocent enough, but the creepiness factor slowly rises. And I know that you'll find love. I will possess your heart. Despite a simple and catchy chorus, this Death Cab single moves from expressing a puppy love type of affection to one that's dark and demanding. You By the time the song's bridge arrives, it's apparent the singer's admiration isn't being received quite how he'd like it to be. And I know that you'll find 
blow, I will possess your heart. Nonetheless, he remains determined that he will possess their heart. You gotta spend some time with me, and I know that you'll find love. I will possess your heart. Number six, Hey There Delilah, Plain White Tees. Hey there Delilah, what's it like in New York City? I'm a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty. Yes. On the surface, it sounds like a long-distance love letter. Some square can shine as bright as you. But let's dig a little deeper, shall we? Songwriter Tom Higginson actually confessed the Grammy-nominated single is about his unrequited love for real-life distance runner Delilah Di Crescenzo. Hey there, Delilah, I've got so much left to say. If every simple song I wrote to you would take your breath away, I'd write it all. Even though she had a boyfriend when they met, the Plain White Tees frontman wrote the song with her in mind. I was like, you know, you know what? I will write you a song. And it's going to be the song, you know, it's going to be the best song I ever write, and it's going to be the one that gets us famous, and, you know, you'll be my date for the Grammys. They never got together, but they did keep in touch, and she even accompanied him to the Grammys. Hey there, Delilah, here's to you. This one's for you. Number five, your beautiful James Blunt. My life is brilliant. My love is pure. Ladies, don't smile at random guys in the subway. At least that's what we take from this folk rock tune. She smiled at me on the subway. She was with another man. Although James Blunt claims he's got a plan to get the girl with another man, he takes the high road and doesn't actually act on it in the song. Yes, she caught my eye as we walked on by. She could see from my face that I was. Instead, he continues to profess his love for the woman he probably only saw for all of three seconds. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's true. At least he's honest with himself and admits he'll never be with her. Can't say we're surprised. I will never be with you. Number four, Hungry Like the Wolf, Duran Duran. with the sound of early 80s synth pop and copping a Gordon Lightfoot melody. This Duran Duran hit is a sexually charged spin on Little Red Riding Hood. Primal and animalistic, it depicts a wolf-like man on the hunt for a mate. On top of the fact that there's no mention of any consent or mutual interest on the woman's part, Simon Le Bon actually admits he's stalking her with the lyrics I sometimes see you pass outside my door. Number three, hello, Lionel Richie. Hello. Bursting with lust and wonder, this R&B and soft rock number is sung to a person who's had the misfortune of walking past Lionel Richie's door. You're all I've ever wanted. My arms are open wide. Meanwhile, the question he asks following the hello appears to be rhetorical as the former Commodore seems pretty sure he is the one you're looking for. Hello. This has us wondering if it's a restraining order Lionel's looking for. Number two, one way or another, Blondie. One way. 
might say there are worse people to be stalked by, but that's a bit weird. Co-written by Debbie Harry, this Blondie track draws on the singer's actual experiences with a former boyfriend, whom she called a stalker and a nutjob. Despite its bouncy and danceable sound, one way or another takes on new meaning when you realize it's sung from the perspective of an obsessed individual. It's not all bad though, as Harry flips the lyrics later in the song and gives old Johnny Creepshow the slip. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, every breath you take, the police. Every breath you take, and every move you make. Described by Sting as rather evil and a nasty little song, this ditty is often misinterpreted as a love song. it actually goes far beyond voyeurism and moves into full-on surveillance. And it's not just Sting's omnipresent lyrics. The music itself seems to stalk the listener. Along with Andy Summers' cold and haunting arpeggios, there's Sting's bass lines and Stuart Copeland's hypnotic drumming. One note piano part is creepy. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite stalker song? For more unshakable top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.